Hi, this is Tim from Slide Dynamic, and this is just an overview and a bit of a tutorial on uh, the latest version of our Prezi Auto Player application. This is 1.7. Um, to save me covering a lot of the stuff that's already covered in the basic application, um, I will leave a link to uh, the video that explains version 1.6, which covers pretty much everything. And I'm just going to focus on the, uh, the delta, uh, those two or three key functions that we've added in this version, and explain those in a bit more detail. So I'm going to demonstrate this on a PC. Um, there is an application version which works on Mac. Um, and you can also have this uh, on a website or a blog too. So there are three versions. So I'm going to demonstrate the PC version. And in all three versions, it works with a Prezi, whether it's a free version, a commercial version, or even the EDU version um, that's either exported from Prezi.com as a portable Prezi or uh, exported from the Prezi desktop as a portable version. And in all those cases, if you uh, download or export, you'll get a zip file. And if you uh, expand it, you'll see this kind of uh, structure. The Mac version looks slightly different. Um, so if I double click the Prezi, as we do normally, um, you get obviously Prezi starts. Um, and if you want to autoplay it, you, uh, you hold down this button, and you've got these three options. And that's all you can do is, is autoplay manually, and each uh, pause will be exactly the same. So our application uh, covers and offers you an opportunity to adjust those individually and to obviously start to automatically make it loop, make it pause at a specific point, and so on and so forth. So as I say, I'm just going to cover the, uh, the delta between uh, version 6 and version 1.7. Now in version 1.7, there are two types. Uh, there's a, a plus version, and I'll explain that in a moment. If I just work with the standard version for the moment, so all I'm going to do is just copy in the files that come with the standard version. So you'll see here the new uh, executable, uh, the app, is, uh, is the equivalent for the Mac version. Um, I'm going to include audio. You don't have to. Uh, but this is the main difference between version 1.7 and version 1.7 plus. Just to demonstrate that you can synchronize a single audio file. Uh, this is the configuration file. And then there are two additional files. Um, uh, these two flash files, I'll explain those in a moment as well. So what I'll do is I'll start this. It will autoplay, and you will hear the audio kick in when it first uh, autoplays as well. Then I'll stop it and explain. So you'll see the preloader. That can be customized, both the text and the colors for everything. And you'll see it auto starts, and you'll see the music kicks in and is synchronized with the first transition. And I'll pause it there. And um, as you'll see, you can control each uh, each view or each point pause point in uh, in Prezi's path um, to the second. Anyway, um, just to explain what's going on here. So these two uh, buttons, the mute and the pause and play button, those can be controlled, their visibility or availability. Um, that's standard. Uh, the one thing you will notice here is that there are no controls visible, either the zoom or the, uh, the command buttons in Prezi's right-hand corner. Uh, this, is, this kind of allows you to go to the previous and next um, view within Prezi, um, which used to actually hide automatically. But uh, Prezi decided not to uh, enable that. So this version, sort of key feature, is the ability to obscure those. Now, I say obscure because it's not hiding them. It's, it's just covering them with these two uh, flash files. Um, you have to control their position. So by default, they come and they fit correctly for the uh, for the normal, if you like, launch of Prezi. But if you uh, go to full screen, they're in the wrong place. So you need to adjust them. And that's what I'm going to explain. You, there are various colors to cover the various templates within Prezi. Um, there's even transparent ones, which basically leave those controls visible, but basically make them inoperable. So uh, a viewer cannot. Um, accidentally kind of move to the next or previous path point, subsequently taking the synchronization of the audio um, or the, the the views out of sync. Um, so that's what I'm going to cover and how we can um, adjust those. So let me go to the configuration form. 
So this is the standard configuration form. It's pretty much the same as version 1.6. The only difference, I'll cover the key things, is, um, is you can toggle full, what we term toggle full screen. So if you click this to yes, basically when you launch Prezi as an offline in a Mac or a PC, it will actually launch full screen. So you don't have to manually kind of go find the full screen button and click it. That doesn't work on the web, by the way, so don't do it. Um, the thing that uh, I was going to cover in a bit more detail is the, the ability to control the um, the the two flash buttons which cover the command and the zoom functions within Prezi. So first of all, you can um, you can decide if you want them visible or not. <laughs> what I mean by that is whether you want the buttons visible to obscure the controls. No, I've confused myself. So by hitting yes to both cases, they are then visible and subsequently they hide Prezi's controls. Now in terms of positioning them, as I say, the default settings are for Prezi's de default launch size. If you are on the web and you set the dimensions of the Prezi to be displayed, um, you know, 640 by 480, then you need to adjust these values accordingly. You can do that by simply dragging and moving the sliders, and that will then position their X and their Y positions. Um, if you're offline, and you want to start in full screen, and let's just suppose you're on a MacBook Pro, then you just move everything to maximum. And by doing that, when you launch Prezi full screen, those buttons actually cover the correct portion of the screen so that the controls are hidden. Um, let's just go back to default for a second. So that's uh, how you control the position of the buttons. Um, and also, we've included the source file for those two buttons. So if you want to design your own, um, if you like buttons or, or shapes or colors to cover Prezi's controls, you may want to add a corporate logo or something similar, then you can obviously do that. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the, the key thing. It's the ability to obscure those controls and to start in full screen. What I'm going to cover, though, is version 1.7 plus so this is a separate version of the application all those things I've just covered exactly the same the big difference and this is kind of a new and quite considerable addition is that in the standard version you can include an audio file and it will start to play and go through and play and it will loop if you decide to let Prezi loop um, if you've got a very large Prezi with lots of path points, and instead of having a single audio file that you need to sync throughout Prezi because you know when it starts, in the new version, 1. version 1.7 Plus, you can now include individual audio files for each path point. So you'll see here that path point 1 indicates the time from when Prezi initially loads until it first moves to the next path point and at that point you can then include what audio you wish to start so you simply name the audio file that you have with .mp3 on the end so this could be uh, and then you can set the time for each path point and specify the audio for that path point and if you get to a path point that you want to pause because there's a YouTube video just leave it blank no audio will play so this will support Prezi's up to 500 path points so subsequently you can have 500 audio files and each one will be exactly synced to the view and the pause within the path point so that's kind of the new key features of uh, version 1.7 including 1.7 plus there are demos to download. Um, in addition to those, historically, in version 1.6, the lowest value you could put as a pause within a path point was one second. Now you can go even lower. So if you want to put a handful of these path points together and make them actually a very quick transition and place hidden frames close to one another, you can emulate what would be Prezi moving more slowly between two path points, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's it. Those are the two things, um, and that is Prezi 1.7. Um, just post a comment if you need anything. Thanks very much.